So the Hyperloop's been in the news recently for three reasons. Firstly, Elon Musk has gotten verbal permission to build the New York to DC Hyperloop. Founder Elon Musk wants to take people from New York to Washington DC in less than half an hour. He tweeted, the government has given him verbal approval to build an underground Hyperloop from New York to DC. Elon Musk says a New York DC Hyperloop is coming. Elon Musk is the head of lots of companies, Tesla, SpaceX, and The Boring Company. In this video, we'll take a look at the Hyperloop, the brand new method of transport brought forth by the entrepreneur and billionaire Elon Musk. But it would be for, for a fifth mode of transport. I, I have a name for it, name for it, which is called the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop, yeah. And he got that shortly Three, after Hyperloop two, One celebrated one, its Kitty five, Hawk five. moment. And that was shortly after the Netherlands opened its very first Hyperloop test track. It's happening, people. It's really happening. Cheap supersonic vacuum tube travel that will revolutionize the way we think about travel. The system is proposed to travel at an average speed of 900 kilometers an hour and at a top speed of 1,220 kilometers an hour. Capsule that doesn't touch anywhere hovers and then because of the low pressure doesn't encounter a lot of resistance. It's also a lot faster. You can basically get from downtown LA to downtown San Francisco in 30 minutes. It's also extremely energy efficient due to solar power utilization. In fact, the Hyperloop could generate more power than it consumes. Um, no, not quite. So let's take this in reverse order. The Netherlands Hyperloop test track. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole thing. 30 meters long. We are going to start constructing a track between two cities already in 2021. One of the nicest things about Hyperloop is that it's completely CO2 neutral. So no greenhouse gas emissions. And that's possible because those vehicles are traveling inside this vacuum tube. Which was in honor of the uh, Netherlands team who managed to create a Hyperloop pod that couldn't even get to the end of a one kilometer long test track. So here we go, the push is off and it's accelerating the pod. 30 kilometers to that, 50 kilometers to 60, 70. Wow, it's a record, 80 kilometers an hour. 80, 90 kilometers per hour, and it releases the pod and the pod stops. And let's not forget that a bunch of talented students from around the world are competing to build Hyperloop pods and test them in a smaller scale tube at Elon Musk's SpaceX headquarters near Los Angeles. And it releases the pod and the pod stops. One of the things this competition is for is to show the world that we can do this and convince them that we should build it somewhere and get the ball rolling. And that was even after it being pushed about one quarter of the way where it got up to about 70 or so kilometers per hour. Most cars on the freeway would idle past that. But Hyperloop One, they're the real deal, right? I mean, they just had their Kitty Hawk moment just to demonstrate that the Hyperloop was really possible. Well, in their previous test, the countdown was longer than their actual test. Five, four, three, two, one. When you think of Hyperloop, you think maybe this is gonna happen years from now. It's gonna happen much quicker than anyone imagines. Wow, a maglev train. That constitutes the uh, first successful test of the Hyperloop. Well, they did a similar one, but this time in a metal tube. Are we about to witness the Kitty Hawk flight of the future? The train of tomorrow? Roll the video. Here it is. It hits 70 miles an hour, whisking through 500 feet. What started as just a pipe dream of Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk just took a gigantic and historic step toward reality. The Hyperloop One has just completed its first ever full scale test run of the high speed train in a tube. The team at Hyperloop One says this short but sweet firing of a sled in a vacuum tube is the world's first successful Hyperloop full systems test. Now I'm still dubious whether this thing was actually conducted under vacuum because sound really doesn't travel in the vacuum. So how can you hear stuff? first successful Hyperloop full systems test. Now sure, sound can travel through the metal, but honestly, it doesn't really sound like that. 
And of course, my doubts are aggravated by the fact that their own promotional video shows that the vacuum access ports are covered with things like pieces of cardboard. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to hold the vacuum, guys. Further, it looks like they've got ports all the way down, presumably to put extra pumping stations on, none of which have been installed yet. But honestly, that's about right. If you've got a metal tube that size and you want to have it under vacuum, you will need a lot of pumps on it. Because this is such a large chamber and it takes a lot of power and a lot of uh, resources for us to pump it down, we want to make sure before we put the pods in here that nothing is going to happen to them under a vacuum. Different teams want to go to different pressure levels, but if we go down to like a fairly low level, it'll probably take about 30 minutes. And you'll have to have those pumps all the way down the 600 kilometer length of the tube. And like I was saying, as of yet, none of that has been installed. So their Kitty Hawk moment was basically running a maglev for 500 feet. Seriously, this is the full unedited version of their test. Everybody realizes how big of a, a day moment this was for us. Um, this is, I, I did not expect my wife to be here, so this, but she said a couple of different things. She said, this sounds like an impossible challenge, but you've never failed at anything in your life, and if there's anything you can do, you could do this and you could prove people wrong. And so thank you all for the sacrifice. Woo! Dude, your entire test lasted less than eight seconds. We got plenty of champagne, and I only bought 45 cigars. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, this was reported by Breitbart News as Hyperloop 1 may have just killed California's high-speed rail. <laughs> will be recorded and we will change the world um, and we will not give up um, and I want to say thank you to all of you this is no more words can really describe it uh, forgive me if I'm not terribly impressed by that maglevs have been around for decades metal tubes have been around for decades and traveling at 70 kilometers per hour has been around for decades no one ever doubted that you could run a maglev in a metal tube for about 10 seconds. By the end of 2016, the end of this year, we'll have demonstrated Hyperloop operating with all of its components. We'll have showed the world this isn't a pipe dream, this is actually reality. Look, the real technical challenges are making a vacuum tube of this size. I mean, just take a look at SpaceX's Hyperloop test track. Seriously, they couldn't even build a mile long test track. And even at that, that's the second largest vacuum chamber in the world. Yeah, and, and so we, we got the, I'm told this is like the, maybe the second biggest uh, vacuum chamber in the world after the Large Hadron Collider. So it's uh, kind of exciting. And that's only one four hundredth of the actual size of the proposed Californian Hyperloop. You know, the one that's going to get you from Los Angeles to San Francisco in about 30 minutes. Traveling at almost the speed of sound, the speed of a bullet. Down a tube, essentially a rifle barrel uh, in a vacuum, essentially in space. And even at that, that does nothing to address all the expansion and seal problems that you will have on that. And that's just the start. Then <laughs> You've got to make this all stable enough that you can fire a pod through there at about the speed of sound. I mean, the energy in these capsules is just crazy. Energy goes with the velocity squared, right? Which is one of the reasons why if you fire a bullet at just say the outside of this, this vacuum tube, it would go through it. And now you've got a capsule that's gonna weigh 10, 20 tons or something, a, a bullet of 10 or 20 tons mass actually firing through the middle of this tube. Anything goes wrong, even the slightest problem with that, and it will absolutely destroy the entire Hyperloop system. Hell, let's just say a loose bolt is thrown up by the track somewhere. That means that that bolt would hit the capsule at about the speed of sound. Any stray particle in there at all, any dust or anything, will hit the capsule at about the speed of a bullet. These are the technical challenges 
of making the Hyperloop, not running a maglev train in a metal tube for 500 feet. The Hyperloop is another one of Elon Musk's ideas. In this video, we'll take a look at the Hyperloop, the brand new method of transport brought forth by the entrepreneur and billionaire Elon Musk. Look, this is the thing. The Hyperloop was not invented by Elon Musk. The idea of the vacuum train has been kicking around for about a century. Indeed, the prototypes of the vacuum train were made about the same time as Kitty Hawk was. However, in the hundred years since then, the plane has gone from this to this, while nothing really ever came of the Hyperloop. And believe me, it's not like with the plane where you could have argued that it was waiting for the right materials or the right manufacturing techniques. <laughs> We're talking about making metal tubes. Hyperloop, a massive solar powered tube. Those tubes could be the future of travel would allow passengers to get from Los Angeles to San Francisco in less than 30 minutes. It's going to be able to reach, in theory, speeds of 700, maybe even 800 miles an hour. Just to get from LA to San Francisco in 35 minutes, there's, there's almost nothing else like that. The Hyperloop high-speed transportation system has moved a step closer to reality. Yeah, the reason this has never happened is because the practical details of making a continuous metal tube haven't changed that much. Making a continuous metal tube hundreds of kilometers long is tough. Running it under what has to be a very well-maintained vacuum is even harder. Making it so straight that a train can go through it at basically the speed of sound where any slight deviation will basically cause the whole thing to explode. And yeah, explode is about right. A 15 ton capsule basically traveling at the speed of sound has about the same energy as about two tons of TNT. Well, let's just take a look at the energy stored in the vacuum in this tube and what the failure in a tube like this might look like. Have you ever seen what happens to a tanker truck when it's pumped out under vacuum? And this is basically releasing that energy that I was telling you about earlier. I mean, just things like wind strain or expansion strain, because so far, none of the tubes that they've created have dealt with the expansion issue in any way whatsoever, or just simply an earthquake. Hell, a car crash into one of the pillars, any slight dent in that wafer thin tube and you would be looking at a cascade failure that would release about the same energy as five Moab bombs. Now Elon Musk might be planning to bury the tube of the Hyperloop, which has some advantages. Burying stuff would help out with things like the expansion problems. But it will also cost about 10 times as much as it would cost if you were doing it on the surface. And further maintenance of that tube underground becomes a nightmare. And yes, it is a vacuum chamber. One thousandth of an atmosphere might not quite be deep space levels, but it's more than enough to make frogs explode. Look, Elon Musk is a software engineer who did fantastically. And now he can afford very expensive hobbies. And I fully applaud that, and I fully applaud his philanthropic efforts. But I gotta be honest, giving a new name to something that's been around for a hundred years does not a genius make. Nor does giving a new name to an idea that's been impractical for the last hundred years suddenly make all the practical problems with it disappear. 